Hey, what is up, guys? It's Chris here from the WWFU Internet Network here again with another WWFU review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Ring of Honor's uh, IP review from this past Saturday in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm going to be reviewing Boiling Point, uh, a show that wasn't initially supposed to actually be on IP review, but ended up being on IP review. Uh, overall, this is an okay show. It's just it's you know it's being said it was the worst Ring of Honor IP review ever, and uh, I sort of have to agree on that one. You know. This, I gave, I just, you know, I usually don't say what I gave it overall. I gave it a 6.5 overall, and what a Ring of Honor I pay-per-view, I normally give those around 8s and 9s, and this is the first time in a very, the first time ever, I had to stoop down into the 6s to give a Ring of Honor show that kind of score, and that's just depressing, because I remember Ring of Honor used to be constantly putting out amazing I pay-per-views, and now they're just they're putting out these throwaway I pay-per-views, and it's just, it's not the same. But uh, let's just go on with the show. Uh, we kick things off at Roderick Strong taking on Mike Mondo. This is actually a very good starter. Uh, Mike Mondo, just because he's an affiliate of the WWFU Internet Network doesn't mean I am biased to say that he's a great wrestler, because he is a great wrestler. He totally impressed me in this match. You know, they keep feeding him better and better guys. You know, he's taking on Davey. Now he's taking on Roderick Strong. And Roderick Strong is an amazing professional wrestler. And these two just mixed well. Uh, some very good wrestling here. Uh, Mike Mondo, a notable spot in this one. Uh, he did this like football tackle into the guardrail. He went all the way up the entrance ramp and then ran all the way down just to collide with Roderick into the barricade. It was a very, very sick spot, and I was just like, wow, you know, this guy really just he he likes his company because he, he wouldn't be taking bumps like that if you know he didn't really want to shine in this company. And you know, Roderick Strong, yet again, just a very talented guy who actually got busted open in this match. Uh, Mike Mondo gave him a high knee at one point and just uh he got a cut over the like right above the bridge of his nose, it just started bleeding, and it was it was interesting. It definitely added something to the match. Three and a quarter, very very good opener. One of the best matches of the night. Uh, next we had a four corner survival match for an ROH contract. This was announced that it would be for an ROH contract. Uh, only a couple of days before the event, uh, we had Matt Taven, uh, Vinny Marseglia, the Promise Antonio Thomas, and QT Marshall all tangling up in this one. And I have seen Matt Taven and QT Marshall uh, in person actually at multiple indie shows because you know i live on the east coast and a lot of these guys are very known in east coast indie companies and they're both very impressive especially matt taven and a lot of people were shocked that matt taven actually didn't walk away with the victory here but uh i report the good news that there has been talks between wwe and matt taven so matt taven may be going to bigger and better things so you know i guess that's one of the reasons he lost let's hope maybe uh, i hope that's the reason you know unless ring of honor is just stupid and they're missing out Overall, this was very, very fun. Uh, Matt Taven stole the show in this one, though. Uh, you know, Vinny Marsiglia was pretty impressive. He kind of reminded me of Ultramantis Black a little bit. I don't know. From uh, Shakara. Then uh, Antonio Thomas, I wasn't really impressed with. And I wasn't, I'm going to be honest, QT Marshall, uh, he's good, but he didn't impress me. Matt Taven stole the show in this one. You know, just very, very good wrestler. You know, he has, he's technical. He knows how to do mat work, but he also can do some high-flying spots, and overall, just a very well-rounded wrestler, but uh, this was still a very good match. Uh, QT Marshall ended up winning the ROH contract. Uh, three stars. Very, very good match. Uh, I'm interested to see where QT Marshall goes from here, and uh, I'm also interested to see where Matt Taven goes from here. If he's actually going to WWE uh, and FCW, that'd be absolutely awesome, and I'd be very happy for Matt Taven, so I guess we'll see what happens in the future. Next, we had a Proving Ground match between the uh, Ring of Honor TV champ Adam Cole and Brutal Bob Evans. Uh, the last time I saw Brutal Bob wrestle on a Ring of Honor show, besides ROH TV, was Fade to Black. He uh, This was before the Prodigy Mike Bennett debuted on uh, HDNet, and I guess he was just breaking into Ring of Honor as a wrestler. It was awkward, but uh, Brutal Bob isn't that great of a wrestler, I'm not going to lie, but this is alright, you know. Really, nothing special. I kind of, I'm kind of angry that Adam Cole was put in a match like this because he is your TV champ. He should be defending the championship as much as he can. And I, I, I was just not really impressed. It was two and a quarter. It was still decent. I mean, Adam Cole's the man, so like, I want to be somewhat biased to this, but still, it just wasn't that good. And this is where the show kind of took a dip. Uh, and then we had our next match: Charlie Huss and Michael Elgin. Probably quote me on this: the worst Ring of Honor match of the year. A star and a quarter. I have never given a Ring of Honor match anything below two stars. This is the first time I'm doing it. Star and a quarter. I don't even want to talk about it. It dragged out. It was like a 10, 20 minute match. It felt like an hour. It sucked. And I, I don't want to go into a mini rant here, but Michael Elgin just had a five star classic with Davey Richards. 
and he's just dipping and dipping. And Ring of Honor is booking him to be a very fabulous mid-carder when he should be a fantastic main eventer. We need main eventers in Ring of Honor, and they're just putting this guy like he's a mid-carder when he's not. He's Michael Elgin. He's the man. And it's just it's irritating to see that he's in this kind of position when he's really very talented, and he can definitely create a challenge for Kevin Steen. It was also announced here that... Uh, Kevin Steen and Michael Elegant will be uh, taking, uh, going at it in Canada for, uh, I get Glory by Honor. Yeah, Glory by Honor. And that should be interesting. I'm interested to see where that goes. Uh, and then, you know, we, there's definitely some tension between uh, Michael Elgin and Roderick Strong. It's very obvious. And I, I have a feeling those two are definitely going to feud in the very evident future. Even, I, I think they'll have a big blow off match at uh, Final Battle, to be perfectly honest. But Moving on, we have the Briscoes taking on Steve Crano and Jimmy Jacobs. This was when the show kind of rose up. It, it would eventually slip a little bit down. Uh, but this is very good. The Briscoes are awesome. You know, they're just a very good tag team. Uh, Steve Crano and Jimmy Jacobs representing Scum, uh, the stable they're with, uh, in with, uh, with Kevin Steen. This was just a good match. You know, these guys really mix well. You know, the Briscoes are awesome. Uh, Steve Crano and Jimmy Jacobs, this was one of their first times teaming up on a, uh, since the announcement that they would be in the ROH Tag Team Tournament. They impressed me. Steve Carino, you know, could still go. Jimmy Jacobs is great. The Briscoes, you know, it's just very fun. These guys, I really like Scum as a whole, as a group. I really like their antics at trying to cheat and stuff. It's very interesting and entertaining. And then the Briscoes are just fantastic wrestlers. The best tag team I ever, I personally think that's ever been through Ring of Honor and still with Ring of Honor. They're absolutely awesome. I love the Briscoes, and they just always, always, always impress me. Uh, I gave this three and a quarter very, very fun. I recommend checking it out, you know. Uh, Steve Crano and Jimmy Jacobs, I think they're winning the ROH tag titles, but you know that will be for a different video. Uh, next, we had the two out of three falls match between Jay Lethal and Tommaso Ciampa. This is what made me a Tommaso Ciampa fan. Uh, early on, Tommaso Ciampa, he uh, hyperextended his knee in a very awkward position, and it looks like he injured his knee. This was before the first fall happened. This was two out of three falls. And he worked through the entire match and still managed to put on a sick match. Huge kudos to Tommaso Ciampa. He's amazing. And I honestly felt, you know, Ring of Honor made a very poor choice with having Jay Lethal go over in this one. Uh, it's one of, it's really awkward. You know, Jay Lethal's one of those guys, you know, he always wins matches, but they, they never, ever put him against the champ. I don't, I don't really get it. He's always in the mid-card, uh, high mid-card. I honestly feel he should be wrestling guys like Steen, but, you know, I'm not complaining because he's putting on good matches with Tommaso. Uh, this was a hair under their match with uh, at Border Wars, but honestly, it would have been better if Tommaso wasn't hurt. Three and a half, very, very fun. I highly recommend you check it out. R.D. Evans gets involved. It's very funny. And Prince Nana ends up getting involved as well. So very good stuff. I highly recommend you check it out. Next, we had a mixed tag team match. Uh, Eddie Edwards would team up with Sarah Del Rey to take on the Prodigy, Mike Bennett, and Maria Canellis. This is really nothing special. I have a feeling they just brought in Sarah Del Rey. Just, you know, it's kind of like a goodbye because she's going to WWE. But it was okay, uh, two and three quarters. Uh, it was it was all right. You know, Maria really didn't get any offense here. Uh, notable spot. I, a lot of people mark out for this. Uh, Maria rolled under the ring. She went through the ring skirt and went under the ring. Sarah Ray went to chase her and uh, took off Maria's top and bottom. <laughs> Maria was naked under the ring, ladies and gentlemen. You don't see much. Sorry to <laughs> raise false hope. But uh, good match. Eddie Edwards and Mike Bennett for the uh, offense they had. Very decent, very decent. Eddie Edwards, one of my favorites in Ring of Honor. Mike Bennett. Very great wrestler, so, you know, this two and three quarters, you know. Uh, I really like to see Eddie Edwards and Mike Bennett go at it. I think those two can have a very good single suit, so I guess we'll see where that goes from there. Next, we had our main event and Anything Goes match for the ROH Championship between Kevin Steen and Shakara's Grand Champion, Eddie Kingston. Uh, this, was, this was supposed to be amazing. I have a feeling this could have been four and a half. It's just, you know, early on... Uh, Basically, what happened was Kevin Steen, he uh, turned a table upside down, so the uh, metal, uh, they call them the table lips, were facing up, uh, but they were lower down on the table, and uh, Kevin Steen suplexed Eddie Kingston through it, and Eddie was, you could just tell he was hurt, and, uh, you know, they, they stalled for as best as they could, you know, Kevin Steen grabbed the mic, you know, just out of improv and started talking, and then he called out Eddie, it said that, you know, Eddie uh, Larry Sweeney thinks you're a bitch, and st uh, <laughs> Eddie ran to the ring, and, you know, they finished the match, but this should have been awesome. It was all right, three and three quarters. It could have been amazing. It was good, but it could have been amazing, so it was kind of just kind of like a buzzkill, because this match should have been awesome, but what can you do? I also wanted to talk about some aftermath with this match. You know, Kevin Steen with the altercation with the fans. Uh, some of you may know uh, Ke uh, Kevin Steen got to an altercation with two plants. They were opposing his fans, and, you know, he hit two two uh, 
planted fans. And I honestly think that was just an attempt to turn him heel because, uh, you know, at best in the world, he tried to cut a promo on New York. I remember being there live and it just didn't work. <laughs> so, you know, just I guess they're just trying to turn him heel as best as they can. So he's, you know, against the crowd. But overall, very disappointing eye pay-per-view. I really hope Ring of Honor steps it up. But what can you do? So thank you guys for listening. Uh, please tune in. We'll be doing a uh, SummerSlam review, of course, you know, this Sunday. Uh, I'll try my best. I'll be on vacation, but I will will probably be watching the show, and I will try my best to get a review out right after. So thank you guys for listening, and have a good one.